What's up, guys? You've been hearing a lot about the rules between the exhibition Mike Tyson and Jake Paul fight. Now, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson were pushing for a professional fight. They didn't want an exhibition fight, but it's being classified as an exhibition fight. But the rules aren't exactly exhibition rules. So let's look into this interview that Mike Tyson did with Sean Hannity. Oh, but before we jump into that video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we talk about everything. We talk about everything that has to do with combat sports, MMA, boxing, kickboxing, whatever. Whatever interesting is going on in the combat sports world, we could talk about. So I want to thank you all for subscribing who have been supporting the channel lately. I've gotten over 30 subscribers in the past week, and that's the most growth my channel's ever done. However, I have been more consistent. I've been posting a video almost every day, and I'm trying to keep up with that. Been having a good time doing it, having a good time editing it and making jokes and stuff like that. Uh, most of you guys are really cool. You know, there's a few trolls out there, but that goes with the territory. I don't care. Anyway, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and we'll jump into it. No, no, I'm serious. Go ahead and go ahead and subscribe. It's, it's right there, right there. Just go ahead and press subscribe. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, let's jump into the interview with Mike Tyson and Sean Hannity. All right, the fight's going to take place July 20th. It's going to be in Arlington, Texas, streamed on Netflix. Here now with more, former heavyweight champion, the one and only Mike Tyson. Good to see you, my friend. What's up, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, will you please promise me you're going to kick this guy's ass and shut him up, please? <laughs> hey, I will do just that for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're going out, you're going to do it for me. All right, I watched your training video. Um, I know you're in super shape. You're going into this fight. You're nearly twice as old as, you're twice as, old as this guy. Um, is that an advantage for him? Younger, faster? Uh, although you look, you know, you look like you're on your A game in the video. I, I mean, I don't do you know. feel? Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's faster than me. Right. How hard are you training? I, I train every day. Okay. How many hours a day hey, you training? Hey, I take it serious. Listen. Well, listen, it's, it's the whole day. It's the process goes through the whole day. I get up in the morning, do the road work. Then I um, go to the gym at one. Then I go to the strength and conditioning guy. Then it starts all over again. I just want to stop it there for a second. We'll put it back on in a minute. Mike Tyson is training every day. There are tons of UFC fighters that do not train every day. I mean, there's champions in the UFC that don't train every day. What I like about this, and the reason I wanted to make a video on this, is that statement right there. Mike Tyson is training every day. He, and Mike Tyson's all in or all out. His losses that he got in his last few professional fights were because he, he wasn't all the way in. He was all the way out. He was just doing it for the money at that point. But he's all the way in now. Let's get back to the video. Yeah. So Jake Paul is saying he wants to be a world champion. He he says you're the greatest heavyweight champion ever, the baddest man on the planet. And uh... I am going to keep stopping it when I have something to say because I don't want to talk through the video. So I have a problem with Jake Paul saying he wants to be world champion. You have to fight real boxers to be a world champion. And the only real boxer he fought that's his age, he lost to. So I hate when he says that because he's not doing the things that make him deserve being a world champion. He's fighting old, retired MMA fighters mostly. And now he's pulling a 58 year old ex-boxer out from his ordinary life he hasn't trained 
for a fight not really in like 20 years i know he, he trained for roy jones jr but he said he didn't take that serious you know it was just an exhibition fight he said he's taking this one serious but let's continue i don't like that jake paul says he likes to be he he wants to be a world champion boxer though how is he going to do that how if he's not fighting real boxers how is he going to force gump his way up to the champion and then just have this chance maybe maybe he'll fight tyson fury after tyson fury has had like a massive injury or has retired and just kind of given up on wanting to train anymore maybe that i don't know but it's irritating it really is and i think that that's part of the appeal of jake paul is he's irritating to people because we just want to he he's picked picking his fights with people who he's only picking fights with people that he thinks he has an unfair advantage with and can't beat him. So I think part of the appeal is we want to see one of these unlikely possibilities of beating him, beat him. I think that that's the code there. Let's continue the interview. Uh, the most dangerous boxer of all time this this will be the fight of a lifetime you've had a chance to assess jake paul what do you think of his boxing ability i think it's you know he's came a long way from youtube and, and listen i've seen a youtube of him at 16 doing weird dances that's not the guy i'm going to be fighting this guy's going to come he's going to try to hurt me which i'm accustomed to and he's going to be greatly mistaken i like that he's going to be greatly mistaken Okay, so one of the things I wanted to say is Mike Tyson was a boxer that became a YouTuber and Jake Paul is a YouTuber that became a boxer. That is a story that I haven't heard anybody talk about, which is interesting. That is interesting. They're kind of meeting in the middle, you know? Mike Tyson, professional, badass boxer, becomes popular YouTuber. Jake Paul, popular YouTuber, becomes boxer. And now they're meeting in the middle. Isn't that cool? Let's talk about, uh, there's been a lot of rumors out there about the fight that maybe uh, you got have 18 ounce gloves, you're gonna be wearing headgear. Any no, truth in that? No, not true at all. Not true, not true, no true. Listen, um. He just said that there's not gonna be any headgear or 16 ounce gloves. This is called an exhibition. But if you look up exhibition, you will not see any of the laws that we're fighting under. Hmm. This is a fight. You're going in, this is a real fight, and you're going in to win this fight. Uh, what is bringing you back? What is luring you back in? Is it kind of like the last Rocky movie and, and you got stuff in the basement, you need to get it out? You know, Sh Sean, I have a weird personality. I don't think it's weird though. Whatever I'm afraid to do, I do it. Hmm. And that's how it is. I was afraid to, for the Roy fight. I was scared to fight again. I was 100 pounds overweight. I was however old, 54, 53. And I said, let's do it. Anything I'm afraid of, I, I, I confront it. And that's my personality. Like right now, I'm, I'm scared to death. But as the fight gets closer, the less nervous I become because it's reality. And in reality, I'm invincible. Hmm. I think the people hearing that Mike Tyson is scared to death, um, it's kind of reminiscent of, of the last Rocky movie, right? He goes, I'm scared to death. Champ, aren't you afraid? I'm afraid of nothing. Uh, yeah, well, okay, that, that didn't work out. Did you feel that fear or that, maybe it's a sense of failure or potential failure all your career? No, it's, um, it's a sign of victory. Because hmm. and that helped drive you always, through all of those matches, all those absolutely. wins you've had. I always, I always believe the adversity. I always believe the adversity or nervousness. It like pretty much catapulted me into success. Hmm. If right. I didn't have these so, feelings, I wouldn't. Ha I wouldn't go into this fight. I have to have these feelings to fight. Without them, I would never go in the ring. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I hope you don't have those feelings of fear about me one day, because I don't really feel like getting in the ring with you. 
Uh, one one of those Mike Mike Tyson left hooks is gonna you know knock me right back to. Uh -uh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know Jim Gray, our mutual friend, uh, actually started our friendship, and and what a great guy he is. And this is what he says about it. He says you are the, the nicest ever. guy on earth, nicest guy, one of the nicest people he ever met. And I read something. I know I'll talk a little bit about your business. You've gotten into the the weed edible business, and you actually have, you know, yeah. <laughs> you call it Mike's fights. It's shaped like an ear. Obviously, referring to Evander Holyfield and the yeah. fight you had back then. Yeah. Then this is what you said that really interested me. You said that it makes you a different person, and you want to offer this medicinal help to others looking for emotional and physical relief. This is medicinal for you, correct? Absolutely, and not only myself, but many, many millions and millions and hundreds of million people on the planet. Now, I gotta say, the ear-shaped gummies throwing back to his fight with Evander Holyfield is hilarious. I love how it's become a, a huge part of pop culture and Mike Tyson's just rolling with it. So, I don't know if you guys ever been to like a pop culture convention or a comic book convention, but uh, I used to tour as an artist at these and Mike Tyson would be a guest there sometimes. I never got to meet him at one of these, but I had an art collector that I became friends with. And this is before in, like Mike Tyson ever showed any like jokes or anything about the ear thing. It was kind of still like an undiscussed thing. And he got this zombie necklace that was just a bunch of ears and he wanted to bring the ear necklace to have Mike Tyson sign the ears. Just a funny story, but I love how it's become ingrained in pop culture. That's just great. He said, if, if I don't use it for a week or three days, you're a totally different person. And this is what you said about yourself. You're not a likable person. What, what happens if if you don't have the medication? Mm. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with my tripolar. Um, he, he said tripolar tendencies or something. But I don't think I'll be smoking for this fight. And I think I'm gonna be really, really irritated. Wow. Okay. So I think that that's interesting that he said he's gonna go without weed for a while. Now I will tell you, I started taking THC when I was in my early 30s and I take it on a regular basis. It just makes me feel better. I relate to him in this way. And when I don't take it, I feel more on edge and I become very irritable. But I also become almost like more savage in the gym. It's a savage that comes out when when I don't take it. And I know exactly what he's talking about. And if you really, really understand that, that is going to make this fight crazy because Tyson's going to be without it. He's going to be irritable. Tyson has always been controlled chaos, even though sometimes not controlled. That chaos is so, that savage in him is so chaotic that sometimes it gets a little out of control. So without the THC in his system, he is going to become very irritable and he's probably going to train really hard, which it sounds like he already is. I think that that's going to help make it a more exciting fight. Sean Hannity missed a few things in this interview, honestly. And one of the things so far I don't think he understands is the effect that giving up THC going into a boxing match can do. Because THC, it makes you cerebral. You think a lot. You're very hyper aware of everything when you just don't have it at all. And you're, you're used to having that to make you feel comfortable in the world. You lose a certain percentage of that. So I think that that's going to be actually a good thing for the fight but i think sean hannity missed that point so i just wanted to explain that part to you and i had to let you know that you know i like thc i understand i had to tell you so you knew that i understood let's get back to the interview i don't know if irritable and nasty might actually help you in the ring um you know maybe a pissed off mic let, let me ask you this so he you, completely you missed this new line 
Is this something you would even, would you take this before the fight, for example? Normally I do, but at this particular fight, I think I'm gonna go pretty raw and, you know, naked. See, Sean Hannity completely missed what Mike Tyson was saying there. Mike Tyson realized it too, but he just let it go. Yeah, with, with, with the, without all of it. Um, all right, so the fight's coming up, you're training. Um, do you have any yeah. dislike for, for Jake Paul? Like, you, you want to teach him a lesson. I would do just that, but dislike him? No, I don't. I do not have no grudges against him. He's beautiful. And no, it's not from that perspective. This is from my, my, my point of view of grabbing glory. You know, never for Legacy. money, only glory. Legacy. I would never risk my health for money. Yeah. And, I like and that. You obviously feel like you're in the best shape. Uh, I know I speak for a lot of people. They want to I mean, see really, Mike Tyson. I mean, they want to see Mike July Tyson 20. win this fight. Man, I wish Hannity wouldn't talk through Tyson. Another thing I wish Hannity had brought up, and I hope somebody that can interview Tyson brings this up. This is inspirational for guys older than 40. Because in the combat sports world, after 35, you're kind of an old guy. You're kind of on the downward slope. And you can say, no, that's not true because this guy and this guy and this guy. But you know it is true. You know, there's thousands of fighters and tens of thousands of fighters in this world. And once you hit 35, it's pretty common knowledge that you're on your way out. Now, Tyson coming in, he'll be 58 during this fight. And so for him to do that, that's inspiring. It's actually inspired me to get back into the gym. And I'm also going to give you a little scoop on something. I'm going to call out somebody and and set up a fight. And I, I have an amateur record, but this isn't about me. This is about Mike Tyson. I just wanted to say that what he's doing right now is inspiring for people over 40. I'm 45. So like I said, this is very inspiring what Mike Tyson's doing. And Mike Tyson's always been an inspiration. I think that's why we all love him, you know? People my age grew up being inspired by him and he's still inspiring us. It's so great, it's great. I love what he said to Sean Hannity asked him, is, there, is this like a grudge match? You want to teach him a lesson? And Mike Tyson said, yeah, I am going to teach him a lesson, but no, it's not a grudge and I don't hate him. He's a beautiful person. So very respectful. Mike Tyson is just like, he is someone a man's man can look up to because he's so raw. He's so like savage yet able to control the chaos. And every man knows what that feels like. Every man's man knows what that feels like. I'm not talking about like, you know, women, men that feel like they're a woman or anything like that. I'm talking about a man with masculinity, full of testosterone and proud of it. I'm just super inspired. And so let me tell you what I'm planning. And when I put my mind to something, I do it. There's been this troll ever since I started my event business. And he loves UFC, he loves MMA, he loves combat sports. And he's known in the community for being a big mouth and he kind of bullies people and everybody just thinks he's an asshole. Well, he keeps trolling my professional social media pages and he hasn't talked to me to my face, but he's like a keyboard wa warrior. He's behind his keyboard, like talking shit. And some of my team has told me that he talks about me behind my back. I'm going to call him out and tag him in social media. And I'm going to do it via video. And I'm going to call him out to a professionally sanctioned boxing match locally here where we live. And he has a pretty large following. I have a decent following, not so much here on YouTube, but you know, in my personal socials I do. And in my event networks, I have a huge following. 
So I'm going to make an example out of this dude. I'm 10 years older than him. I wouldn't go into a fight without knowing that I'm going to win. And hopefully he wouldn't accept a fight without feeling like he could win. But I think that there's a lot of people that will like watching this guy get punched in the face. I'm not a violent guy. I would only do this under certain circumstances if the stars align perfectly and the stars seem like they're aligning perfectly. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll keep you guys posted on that. It'll be fun. It'll be a spectacle. And I'm going to knock this dude out. But yes, Mike Tyson is very inspirational. And I... I said in a previous video, if it's an exhibition, I don't even really, you know, I'm not going to pay for it. I'll watch it because I, you know, I love combat sports and it's Mike Tyson. But just knowing that he wants to do this for legacy, um, if there's no headgear and they're using regular boxing gloves, I like that too. It does make me feel like there's an agreement between them that we don't know about though. Like, hey, I'm not planning on trying to knock you out please don't try to knock me out. There might be some of that go on because they do have massive respect for each other. Tyson's way more mature now. I hope Jake Paul keeps his word. It, you know, like I hope Mike Tyson doesn't go in there like, okay, I'm going to, I'll pull back my punches and I'll go easy on him. And then Jake Paul just goes as hard as he possibly can to try to, you know, get that, get that, uh, knock out and say, oh, I knocked the crap out of Mike Tyson, you know? I hope nothing like that happens. But that's what this channel is. It's just a discussion of thoughts going on and thoughts revolving around the fights. I think that's good. And if you like the content, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Like the video. I'm still trying to grow this channel. Uh, I would like to hit a thousand subs by August. That would be cool. And I will see you guys in the next video. Boom. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell, ring the bell.